is knees over toes guy correct about walking backwards? Does it actually improve our brain capability and cognition? We're gonna find out and we're gonna start right now. Now since COVID, knees over toes guy has been all of the rage, right? Everybody knows who he is. As you're scrolling through Instagram, you've likely come across either one of his videos or a video from a knockoff version of him. We've seen him talk about walking backwards with sleds. We've seen him on Joe Rogan, blowing Rogan's mind about walking backwards, sledding consistently, even talking about tendon bathing and improving structural integrity around your knees and around your ankles. And we've even seen your favorite fitness and strength influencers get absolutely destroyed by him in a specific workout. Now, the big factor that comes into play is he loves to focus on split squats. He loves focusing on tibialis curls, right? He loves hitting reverse squats and he loves pushing and pulling sleds. Okay, push, pull sleds, push, pull sleds. He keeps his system relatively simple. A lot of it is based around sort of rehabilitation and just optimizing overall health. And it's a system that you could use if you're an individual who might be coming back from an injury. It's a system that could be used if you're just a little lost in the fitness world and you want an easy introduction to getting back into shape or to getting into shape. It's also a really reasonable system that has a lot of modifications based upon your actual capability. But a lot of the question comes back to why backwards? Okay, and this is something that I had asked Ben specifically. I said, yo, Ben, why is everything gotta be backwards? You know, I had spent time with the Poliquin group around Poliquin and all of his sort of lackeys. And he did acknowledge that a lot of that came from Charles. A lot of the backward walking can improve your anterior tibialis. It can improve your quad strength. It's easier on your joints. There's a little bit less of an eccentric load. It can improve your cardio output. And it also can do something to your brain. Now, he has mentioned, Knees Over Toes Guy has discussed that it can lead to better output through your brain waves. But, has there been research on this? Has there been evidence to show that that's actually accurate? Or is this sort of a tagline that we're using in the fitness industry to get clicks, to try and think there's a fast way to make ourselves smarter or to potentially make our bodies smarter so that we can produce more output, produce more power output, and in turn, ideally become healthier over a long period of time. So what I wanted to do is go in and find, is there specific research around walking backwards and then analyze what that research tells us. Look at different EEG measurements, look at different sensory motor uh, rhythms, and those are gonna be rhythms based around the brain and what that does, and then try to understand if there is a positive or negative impact and then how that can actually improve our coordination and if it's used in therapy or even physical therapy, anything along those lines for other different situations. So we're gonna go into that now and see is he actually accurate? That brings us to this research paper. And this is from Lin, Lu, and Li. So if we just type that in and you look at backward walking induces significantly larger upper mu rhythm suppression effects than forward walking does. Okay, so that's the title of this research paper. But we've gotta look in, okay, what are they actually gonna be breaking down? And so initially, we have to look at the proven association between gait, which would be walking, okay, what is our gait as we're walking, locomotively forward, and our cerebral cortex, okay? So is there some type of connection? So if we're walking forward and we look and we see there's some type of sensory motor rhythm. So the sensory motor rhythm would be type of brain waves that happen when we're doing something, again, like walking forward or walking backward. And this would show up and appear as spindles in our brainwave measurements, okay? So one thing that we can think about is that if you understand anything around brain waves and sleep, we're gonna have different type of waves during sleep patterns, okay? So delta waves, beta waves, uh, when we get into a very deep, deep, deep sleep, that's when we'll start to see sleep spindles, okay? So they're gonna appear a little bit differently on the actual measurements. So then we can understand that a little bit and then see that there's gonna be different type of brain waves when we're actually doing physical activity. And if there's different types of brain waves, if there's suppression in specific waves, that means that we might have to be thinking a little bit more or acting differently within ourselves 
to execute that motor task, in this case, walking backwards. And so what does the research say? Okay, we can see that there's some type of connection between gait and cerebral cortex. Okay, so then we can measure that. What's it look like when we're walking forwards versus walking backwards? And specifically using electroencephalograms, EEGs, to measure this brainwave activity, that's going to help us comprehend this information even further. So I'm throwing a lot of stuff at you, so let's try to bear with us as we go through this. And so by measuring through EEGs, we can differentiate the effects of backward walking and forward walking on cortical activities. And by comparing the sensory motor rhythm, eight to 12 Hertz, also called the mu rhythm of EEG signals. So backward walking, exhibited significantly larger upper mu rhythm suppression effects than forward walking did. So suppression effects, okay, so it's gonna put the upper mu rhythm down. It's gonna have a suppression action on it. This finding implies that backward walking induces more sensory motor cortex activity than forward walking, okay? So when they suppress these specific types of brain waves, so the brain waves will be higher when we're just sort of immobilized, okay? If I'm just sitting here chilling, I can just hang out and my sensory motor rhythm will be a little bit higher, okay? There's not as much focus on my movement patterns. And if we start to compare that to walking forwards, we'll see that we might suppress that sensory motor rhythm a little bit to execute forward walking. If we walk backwards, we're gonna suppress that sensory motor rhythm even further to try to execute the actual motor pathway of walking backwards. And this means that this can lead to greater awareness, greater and improved neural drive, and even enhanced perception in space. If we're walking backwards consistently every single day, as Knees Over Toes Guy does talk about, we can start to improve our perception, okay? We can start to improve our cognition. We can start to be a little bit more coordinated with our nervous system, while also reaping the metabolic effects of training with a higher heart rate, and then also the muscular effects of strengthening our quads and our calves. A lot of this research, okay, and, and this is a research paper that you can use as a baseline to help understand what this means. So if we can comprehend that these spindles occur a little bit more when we're just sort of hanging out, well, sitting on the couch, it's a little bit, we're a little bit more aware of our thoughts. As we're walking backwards, that gets suppressed and we're more aware of our movement patterns. One of the other major factors that we have to understand is that a lot of this research, a lot of backward walking research is based around stroke rehabilitation. So a lot of the research that's being seen now is that if we're understanding how sensory motor rhythms are working, and we study, let's say, someone with ADHD. We study someone that has potentially autism or epilepsy. You know, I'm actually thinking about my brother has epilepsy. Okay, so when he would have a major seizure, a grand mal seizure, using walking backwards and then measuring his brain waves will help in that rehabilitative process. Okay, and if we can do this consistently, we can adjust the intensity of the prescribed exercise or the prescribed workout to try and heal from that specific event. So this comes back to understanding the mu rhythm, understanding the mirror neuron system, understanding all these factors at play, seeing a traumatic event like a stroke, or a grand mal seizure, or somebody who does have a chronic issue around, let's say autism or even ADHD, if we can learn how to understand what fitness might do to those brain pathways or to those motor neurons or, or to the wave rhythms that we're trying to study, now we can optimize that and then improve their overall health long-term. So is knees over toes guy right about walking backwards? 100%. Is he the first person to ever talk about it? Absolutely not. There's tons of research going back 20 plus years around stroke rehabilitation and walking backwards. And I think this is something that we can do is we can take this forward. And this is where things like physical therapy, and we've talked about this based around the stumble reflex. We've talked about this with the cross extensor reflex. We see things now from physical therapy leaking into the realm of general health. So we can take things like reflexive strength movements. Contrast methods that we use, the GS contrast method, uses an absolute strength movement with a reflexive movement. Another way to try to optimize cognition would be walking backwards and pairing some type of walking backwards or backward activity like walking lunges backwards 
with some type of movement that's reflexive based. So now your cognition can improve with leading to enhanced perception, leading to enhanced recruitment, and then that's going to lead to better movement patterns. This has also been researched as far as unstable training. So unstable training, band-based training, all of these types of things can be used as tools. But the most important factor here around the knees over toes guy is that you can see there's a large depot of research around walking backwards and healing from strokes, healing from traumatic events. And so absolutely 100% Ben Patrick was right on the button. Use walking backwards three to four times a week. I'd challenge you guys today, do backward walking lunges. That's an exercise that we have inside of our app Peak Strength. Do backward sled pulls. Again, another one of our 700 different exercises that we have inside of our app Peak Strength that's gonna help you with your brain rhythms and improve your overall health. You can head over to peakstrength.app. You can download that and get into athletic fitness. When you get into the athletic fitness portion of the app, you can select it. You wanna focus on weight loss or you wanna focus on muscle building or even functional power output. Those are all key aspects around our app. Make sure you implement walking backwards today because remember, freaks, if you want to become a champion, you've always got to cultivate your power. Peace.